G'day everyone, welcome back to True Footy for yet another edition of uh, us talking about trades because this is one of my favourite topics and it's actually something I'm considering doing uh, most weeks provided there is something to talk about from now to the rest of the season because this is the start of where rumours really start to pick up and uh, as I opened with the AFL app this morning I was greeted with a whole heap of stories to unpack for you today. So what we're going to talk about in this video is the latest Harley Reid news um, which is kind of a weird one to unpack so we're going to go through that first. I want to talk about uh, Himmelberg and Mackay. There's a little bit on Bailey Smith now which has uh, sort of caught my eye for the first time. I mustn't have been keeping up well enough but there's a little bit going on there. There's the Tom Barras story which is bubbling away still. Brody Grundy is another one being talked about this week. So we're going to go through a bunch of different stories and uh, I'll just give you my thoughts on them. As always guys, this trade update is brought to you by manscaped.com. So if you're on the hunt for some tools to upgrade your male grooming routine, make sure you head to manscaped.com. They've got everything you could possibly need from the actual tools themselves, the lawnmower 4.0. There's a nose and ear hair trimmer. They've got colognes, moisturizers, deodorants, everything you could possibly use to round out your routine. You can get 20% off and free shipping by using the code truefooty 20 at checkout. Out, so please enjoy it while you can. All right, we'll crack into it. Uh, the first one I want to talk about is the Harley Reid news, which uh, has particularly taken Eagles fans by storm in the last couple of hours. And it's a weird one. I don't even know if there really is a story, but we're going to unpack exactly what's happened. So Sam McClure on his Tradies podcast has come out and suggested that he's heard from industry sources, reliable sources that he's trust, of course, that are unnamed, that has suggested that Harley Reid has indicated to West Coast that he has a preference not to go play there. So he was clear to outline the fact that Harley Reid didn't say to West Coast, don't draft me, or that he would refuse to come, not that he really has a choice, but he's more or less outlined that uh, his preference would be to stay in Victoria. Now this, you know, assuming it's true, is not even a shock really, right? And I've been talking about for a little while on this channel how there is a new trend where at the if you're at the top end of the draft, the pointy end, for the most part, you're generally going to be able to dictate where you get drafted. That is the unfortunate reality and it's probably been kind of true for a longer time than we really accept. You know, I think back to Chad Wingard in uh, the GWS inception draft, he basically suggested he didn't want to move out of South Australia and he slid to pick six. Bailey Smith was another one who suggested that he had issues that would preclude him from being able to function outside of Victoria. Last year, it was never properly reported, but it's kind of an accepted fact that Sheasel and Wardlaw also said similar things. And there's probably more that I haven't even come up with off the top of my head. But regardless, we kind of accept now that if you are at the pointy end of the draft, it's not necessarily just Vic Metro kids which is the stereotype a little bit but we do kind of accept this fact now that you know if you're a talented kid who's likely to go in the top handful of picks in the draft you're gonna have some sway over which clubs pick you and the power dynamic really is with the player here because while they are forced to get drafted to whoever picks them it's only on a standard two-year contract and teams don't want to invest even one to two years in a player who's just going to leave because there's no guarantee that that player's value will appreciate in the time they're at the club ironically Jason Horn Francis is the biggest example of this happening where he was taken at pick one by North Melbourne and within 12 months didn't even wait for the first two years of his contract to elapse he managed to weasel his way back to South Australia the irony of that was that Jason Horn Francis didn't indicate that he he didn't want to leave South Australia when he was drafted. He just stuck it around at North Melbourne for a year and pissed off. So that's my long-winded sort of contextual basis for the fact that I'm not really surprised that Harley Reid probably wants to have a say in where he ended up ends up getting drafted. So like I said, you know, as far as Sam McClure is suggesting, uh, he isn't explicitly saying don't draft me West Coast. It is worth noting that since, you know, I sat down to start writing this video, it's apparently come out on Footy Classified. They're reporting that Harley Reid has been quite upset by this new story that's broken and that West Coast has also come out and suggested that there has been no communication to them that Harley Reid has communicated he doesn't want to play for West Coast. But here's where I think the truth really lies. Harley Reid probably accepts there's a good chance he is going to end up at West Coast if, you know, the draft picks end up the way they currently are, which is, you know, a, only a possibility at this point. I don't think he's going to weasel himself out of getting drafted by West Coast at pick one, but perhaps what has happened, and this is, I think, a, a logical theory, is that other clubs based in Victoria who have got an interest in trading up for pick one have probably spoken to Harley Reid and said, if we can manufacture a trade for you, say if it's the Melbourne Footy Club who have a number of picks that they could trade, perhaps they've gone to Harley Reid and suggested 
suggested. We're gonna try and get you, would you be keen to play for us? And perhaps Reed or his management have suggested, yeah, if you can make that happen, that is my ideal scenario. That may or may not be what has happened in this particular instance, but I think that would be reasonable conduct from all parties there if Harley Reed just suggests, yeah, I'd prefer to stay in Victoria. That still would be a very far cry from saying that he doesn't want to go and play for the Eagles in Western Australia. Sure enough, we got a tweet here um, regarding Gavin Bell, who is the football department head, I think, at West Coast. His role has changed. I forget his exact title. But he's come out and basically played a straight bat and said, you know, we've had no indication from any player that uh, they don't want to come play for us. And so Rowan O'Brien has also said that, who is the list manager at the moment, or the recruiting manager. I don't know. The, the titles have changed a lot at West Coast lately. But if I had to complain about one little thing that has gone on with this particular story, and it's going to be related to Kane Corns, and that may shock you. Kane Corns, you know, a number of weeks ago when West Coast were at rock bottom, and believe it or not, this is not rock bottom anymore. We've had three games where we didn't lose by 170 points. But he came out and suggested West Coast is a graveyard and that Harley Reid shouldn't come play for us. And when this story broke as well, he's retweeted it as well and basically suggested that if Harley Reid didn't want to come play for West Coast, that's a good move. Now, the thing we need to understand about Kane Corns is that he is a shock jock journo and he is there to generate clicks. And to be honest, he is actually fantastic at doing that. In a weird way, I kind of respect how good he is at pissing people off, generating clicks, generating interest, and I'm sure he is doing his job absolutely to a T. But this is what I don't like about this comment, because it suggests that he's accepting of the fact that a draftee may be dictating where he gets taken in the draft. The unfortunate nature of everything I've just talked about here, where top end picks can dictate where they go, you know, GWS probably didn't even consider taking Harry Sheasel at pick one last year, and arguably that was probably the best pick to take. Jason McCartney even came out and suggested that clubs like GWS have a different talent pool because some players don't want to leave Victoria. So we've got a compromised draft system already, and that's before you even include these weird academy picks. So a prominent media person in Kane Corns coming out and endorsing Harley Reid, saying that he doesn't want to go play for a particular club, ignoring the fact that it's West Coast. That to me, I think is problematic, and I, I think he should do better than that. The integrity of this draft system is kind of already hanging by a thread. If we have people, I would say respected people, I guess broadly he is respected, coming out and endorsing draftees, dictating where they go, and it becomes more and more accepted, then the draft is gonna descend into even more of a shambles than it actually is. So long story short, to encapsulate my thoughts on this issue, one, I don't believe that Harley Reid has uh, suggested that he doesn't wanna go play for West Coast. Secondly, personally, I actually don't think West Coast will end up with Harley Reid. That's just my gut feel on the situation. One way or another, West Coast, I think, will end up with Dan Curtin, but that's just one Eagles Nuffy's opinion. What they don't wanna do though, is admit that they know Harley Reid won't come to WA, because if other clubs have the perception that the Eagles don't think they can get Harley Reid or keep Harley Reid, then the potential trade offer that West Coast receives is reduced. So I'm kind of making two simultaneous, potentially conflicting points here. Harley Reid hasn't told West Coast he doesn't want to go there, but equally, I don't think West Coast is going to end up with Harley Reid. And thirdly, I think it's just poor form from Kane Corns. He's done exactly his job by generating clicks and interest, but I think in the broader interest of the game, making public comments about players being able to dictate where they end up in the draft, I think is pretty shameful. And to be honest, like imagine in six years, Port Adelaide fall into a heap. They have pick one. Suddenly the number one prospect from Victoria, let's call him Jarley Mead, decides he doesn't want to go play for Port Adelaide because they're a basket case. I'll be very interested to see what Kane Corns would have to say about that particular issue if it came up. Because I don't think he has the integrity to be consistent on this issue if it applied to his own club. But anyway, that's all I'll talk about Harley Reid. We'll move on to some other deals here. Um, um, and we'll talk about the, the free agents in particular, Himmelberg and Mackay, which are probably the two biggest names potentially going to be taken as free agency picks, free agency recruits, sorry. Um, and these ones are interesting because it does kind of tie into this Harley Reid situation as well, because both of these players could potentially generate band one compensation if they get contract offers high enough, which will dictate the draft order. It will actually dictate which clubs have enough picks to potentially trade up. So as for where these two players end up, uh, Ben Mackay, it seems like from what is being reported, it seems like a foregone conclusion. He's not going to be at North Melbourne next year. So what it really remains to be seen is who that's likely to be. Callum Toomey believes it's most likely to be Essendon. I don't have off the top of my head exactly what would generate band one compensation uh, because to be honest, I think it keeps changing. But the number of about 850 grand a year has been floated for Ben Mackay, which would generate, um, you know, it would be say pick two North Melbourne currently have, band one compensation would be pick three. So everyone behind that shuffles down one. That to be honest seems ludicrous for a player of Ben Mackay's ability. Like, he's a decent player, but that's about it. As for Himmelberg, uh, I think he's been most likely likely linked to the Sydney Swans. 
He has been tabled a long-term offer from GWS, but remains to be seen what happens there. And again, GWS are a realistic chance to be trying to trade up for pick one this year. If Himmelberg gets band one compensation, that will also give them an extra first round pick to potentially trade up. I've said this in the past though, I don't know why GWS would potentially trade up for pick one for a player that may end up leaving them. And to be honest, while I have suggested that Harley Reid probably hasn't told West Coast he doesn't want to go to Perth, deep down, he's going to be one of the hottest properties in football. He will end up playing where he wants to play. And I'm still skeptical that either GWS or West Coast would keep him if they drafted him. We'll flip through some of the other trade stories. Yeah, I talked about Bailey Smith. This one's caught me a little bit by surprise. Perhaps I'm not close enough to the situation. I haven't been watching the dogs closely enough, but it seems like in recent weeks, he's been pushed into more of a half forward role. And it does make sense to me because the Bulldogs for as long as Bailey Smith's been at that club have had a strong midfield. So a potential prime on baller here has been pushed out to more outside and forward roles. And there's been a bit of a suggestion that it's because he's sick in recent times. But regardless, there is a little bit bubbling away at how he may move on to another Victorian club to potentially be a bigger fish at that midfield. Now, the clubs he's been linked to were Collingwood, Hawthorne and Geelong. Can you, can you believe that? When I saw Geelong is potentially going to go for Bailey Smith, I think the actual words that came out of my mouth were, are you shooting my dick right now? <laughs> He's contracted for another year, uh, but we know that in AFL circles that you usually are a good chance to get traded the year before your contract ends because that's where, you know, the most trade value that you'll have. So it's in the club's best interest to trade you a year early. But according to Sam Edmonds, Geelong has had meaningful trade talks with Smith. I laughed at Luke Beveridge's uh, commentary on this particular topic. He came out and said that the talk around Bailey Smith is pungent. (laughs) It's stanky. Yeah, so I don't know if there's any truth to that. But the, the mere fact that Geelong is sniffing around at Bailey Smith, it just makes me shake my head. How the hell? How the hell? Anyway, we've also got Mason Redman, who uh, in the last week or so has been reportedly offered a six-year deal at the Adelaide Crows, which is quite interesting. It does suggest, uh, just listening to Toomey and stuff like that, I don't have any greater insight than that, that he's more likely to stay at Essendon. He's at least negotiating with Essendon, which suggests some inclination to want to stay, but he is South Australian originally, and he's having a good season. But this is going to open up a very interesting little uh, cycle here where, you know, you've got Tom Dode, who's a free agent at Adelaide as well, yet to commit to the club, supposedly got interest in Brisbane so does Adelaide's interest in Mason Redmond a medium defender sort of tie into the fact that they may be preparing to lose Tom Dode as well I know they're not exactly the same sort of player, but a six-year deal to Mason Redmond does indicate that they really do want him on their list. Essendon's got a bit to consider here. Obviously, if they lose Redmond, um, uh, there's also Brendan Zirk Thatcher as well, who remains unsigned. Now, he might be one of those players that's just trying to play to his ability in his contract year to drive up his contract price, that would make total sense. So I don't really know if Zerk Thatcher leaving is likely, but Essendon do have a bit of a predicament here. If Redmond and Zerk Thatcher want out, it does make them a more likely candidate for Ben Mackay. I'll quickly talk about the Tom Barras story. Uh, We've already covered it, but uh, listening to the Gettables podcast, Toomey does suggest that there's a good chance it does happen. And um, over the last couple of weeks, there's been suggestions that uh, I think somebody else reported that an anonymous West Coast source suggested the Eagles would be open to this. And it, it does make sense. Toomey thinks it could be a case of pick five and 24 um, heading from Sydney to West Coast, which I know will anger some of you because when I last made this video, you weren't even happy with pick six on its own being offered. So I don't really have anything to say in terms of value. I think five and 24 would be quite generous. But at the same time, from a West Coast perspective, he is contracted. He is still an important player. He's a vice captain. He's quite literally one of our best players. He's probably underrated by some of you on here. But at the end of the day, like we're not going to give up a vice captain for anything less than something that gives us a really strong draft hand. So that'll be interesting to see. Gavin Bell has also come out in that interview and also suggested that we have not held any trade talks or had any interest about, you know, any players leaving. And it's, I don't know why, but Gavin Bell just seems like he's either lying or he just doesn't know anything. It kind of reminds me of uh, Obi-Wan in Attack of the Clones. We haven't received any communications about any player of any description. You don't want to sell me death sticks. You want to go home and rethink your life. West Coast typically playing funny buggers here, I think, um, but I'm confident they know what they're doing, (laughs) which is brave because we suck. A couple more things to finish off. Uh, Brody Grundy's been talked about in this week, uh, pretty much just because he got dropped. And uh, Simon Goodwin came out and suggested that he's going to have to learn to play as a full-time forward. And now he's being talked about, and this has come from Gary Lyon, I would imagine is pretty close to the action. And at the very least, a very invested Melbourne Demons fan. But he's come out and suggested he wouldn't be surprised if Brody Grundy's at a new club next year. And I just thought... Are you fucking serious? First of all, you know, a player playing for three clubs in three consecutive years is uh, unheard of, I think. But it's like, 
Melbourne's taking him on on a five-year deal. He's, he's on good money. They're taking a bit of a financial hit to acquire his services. How is there no contingency? How did they not plan for Brody Grundy maybe not necessarily being the right player for them? Did they not think it was a distinct possibility that Grundy and Gorn wouldn't work straight away and, and are now like willing to backflip after he's been dropped once? This just seems like weird. Like, where's the foresight? We're 18 rounds into season one of his contract and they're potentially, again, this is all conjecture. We don't actually know Melbourne's going to trade him, but hypothetically, if they did, I just think, wow, you, you took a pretty big risk, somewhat, somewhat of a risk to acquire Brody Grundy. It's certainly a big investment. And after 18 rounds, he's been talked about uh, as someone you might offload. I don't know. That just seems baffling to me. My guess is that this is probably a bit of a storm in a teacup. And while I don't think Brody Grundy is going to reinvent himself as a key forward at the age of 29, they'll keep him around, surely. Because at the very least, he's good depth cover for Max Gorn, who's not getting any younger. And finally, just a little one for the Eagles fans. Uh, Zach Fisher is a player that I didn't mention because, frankly, not exactly captivating news for the broader AFL community. But uh, it has come out and suggested that West Coast, who were at one point interested in Zach Fisher, have uh, basically suggested that they don't want to invest any draft picks in a trade for Zach Fisher. So if you missed it, we were linked to him a few weeks ago. Um, obviously, he's fallen out of favor at Carlton. Makes sense from a demographic point of view for West Coast, because I think out of all the D-list candidates at West Coast, and there's probably like seven or eight this year, a lot of them are in that 22 to 24 age bracket, just basically a a symptom of several failed drafts by only taking third and fourth rounders. Zach Fisher comes in and plugs a, a demographic gap in that list. But I think what's happening here is that perhaps talks have gone on. The Eagles were originally interested in Zach Fisher. They've probably had a chat with Carlton who would probably want some draft collateral. And West Coast have gone, basically gone, oh, nah, we thought he was going to be basically for free. No thanks. So we'll see what happens there. But um, apparently Zach Fisher is more likely to end up at a Victorian club. Um, basically, that's what's being reported right now. Obviously, things can change in a week in trade week, let alone in the middle of July. So anyway, you guys, that was just my chat about the trade period stuff. Um, like I said, I might make this a more regular segment if people are enjoying it. And the views do suggest that they are popular videos as well. So uh, if you can help me out, let me know in the comments uh, anything you want me to discuss and perhaps I'll do that in the next couple of weeks. Let me know your comments and thoughts on the topics that I've just discussed in this video. Um, some pretty, pretty interesting trade news, um, to be honest. So as always, I appreciate your support. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers, guys.